Coming up on OU Nightly, we're tracking the latest chances for some severe weather. And 28 years later, we remember. Hear from the families who lost loved ones in the Murrah Federal Building bombing ahead. Plus, how you can honor the lives lost. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Brooklyn Sweet. And I'm Olivia Daig. We're watching a chance for severe storms in the state. OU Nightly's weather expert Dylan Strilko is tracking it and gives us the details. Dylan. Yes, so right now we are watching this area just west and north of Lawton all along this I-44 corridor. That is where we're going to be watching for some storm development. You could see some showers and thunderstorms are starting to already pop up. And this is what we were worried about today. So right now, today you could see winds are flying out of the south, bringing in that moisture, that warm temperature. This is what's going to be helping fuel that severe weather risk that we have tonight. So a slight risk across much of central and southwestern Oklahoma. Main risks are going to be damaging winds, large hail, and possible tornadoes. So coming up in Maine weather, we're going to be talking about more about that severe weather threat, a cool down coming up for this weekend, and your spring game forecast on Saturday. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Dylan. Today is a day of remembrance for one of the darkest days in our state and the nation. Today, many gathered at the Oklahoma City Memorial. OU Nightly's Bailey Coyle is live there with a look at this morning's ceremony. Bailey. Today was a beautiful but somber day as community members from all over gathered at First Church across the street from the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum to honor the lives that were taken right here 28 years ago. We come here to remember those who were killed, those who survived, and those changed forever. Silence filled the room for 168 seconds to remember the 168 innocent lives taken too soon. We never forget them, and may we always continue to show the world the Oklahoma standard. Today was also a day to honor the first responders. I grieve with you once again, but I also celebrate the response that served as an example to the world and still does. The generation that responded in 1995 has left us enduring legacies. The memorial has stood as a sign of remembrance of April 15th, 1995. People come here to honor those who died and to contemplate the impact of dehumanization and violence. States and nations look to Oklahoma City Memorial as they try to find their own sense of peace and hope in their tragedies, such as our neighbors in Texas who are building their own. Today, we are joined by Tammy Sinclair, architect from El Progreso Memorial Library in Uvalde, Texas. And as many cities face tragedy, keynote speaker Chief Justice Stephen Taylor spoke on the importance of never giving up in hard times. Never give up on freedom, justice, kindness, and your faith. Silence once again filled the church as the 160 names of those who died were read aloud by family members. We remember our friends and family from the Defense Security Service, third floor. And after those 168 names were read aloud, friends and family walked across the street to visit the 168 chairs and to honor their loved ones' legacies. Reporting live in Oklahoma City, Bailey Coyle, OU Nightly. Thanks, Bailey. The Oklahoma City Philharmonic is hoping to help the community in the next step of healing with its new album. It features an original score first played during the city's first memorial services 28 years ago today. Bass players from the OKC Philharmonic played during the remembrance ceremony earlier this morning. The album goes on sale this Friday. The Philharmonic says both digital and CD versions will be available to purchase. And on April 19th, we remember those who were lost, but it's also a day to think about the ones who survived, including families who have continued on after losing their loved ones. Dakota McDowell-Wapakichi spoke to those families. 
He's live at the Oklahoma City National Memorial with their stories. Dakota. Yeah, these chairs behind me have great significance. They represent the 168 people who are no longer here. Today's families were a little emotional after hearing their loved ones, their daughters and sons' names called out, but there was still a feeling of hope and community. My daughter, Carrie Ann Lenz, Silence as the names of victims from 28 years ago were read. Names like Doris Jones's daughter, who died in the bombing of the Murrah Federal Building while six months pregnant. She was a lot of fun. She was um, very outspoken. She, you know, I've kind of have picked up the banner and tried to follow in her footsteps. Many of these stories are a lot like others. A life taken too early, like Chase and Colton Smith. Doesn't hurt anymore. Um, it did for the first few years, but time moves on. And, you know, you, it's still painful, and you, you know, but it's not as painful as it used to be. This day is something many in the city, state, and nation remember. Certainly something middle school students like Chloe Vodder are starting to learn. It's kind of shocking how many there really are like because you see the pictures and you read about it but I don't think you realize how many of them there really was till you get here. These students wrote letters and placed flowers all for the lesson but to these survivors it was a great act of kindness. There is a group of young people that have came through and put little notes and I read it it's very very moving very uh, it's um, very uh, appreciated. As the water lays calm and the leaves of the survivor tree fly with the wind, many think back to the ones they love. And I'm glad that people come here every day just to remember the people that died. There's so many horrible things that happen every day in the country anymore, and it's just kind of neat that we have this special place for our act of terrorism. The museum today has free admission up until 6 p.m. with last entry at 5, and they invite you to the Run to, the, to Remember events next weekend. In the Oklahoma City National Memorial, Dakota McDowell, Apikichi, OU Nightly. Thanks, Dakota. Now, looking at our national headlines, the dispute over medication abortions continue, despite today being the deadline for the Supreme Court to decide on the issue. Pepper Papura has that and the rest of today's headlines from the News Center. Pepper. Olivia, Brooklyn, the abortion drug Mifeprestone will remain available for now. The U.S. Supreme Court is stepping in on a ruling that would have limited access to the pill, but the hold is only temporary. Same, Justice Samuel Alito issued it to buy more time for the court to consider. A decision is expected this Friday. The family of Tyree Nichols, the man that died after being beaten by Memphis police, is suing. They say they want their son's death to create change in the city. When this is all over, it's going to be some good and some positive because my son was a good and positive person. A $550 million lawsuit has been filed against the city its police department, and the officers involved in Nichols's beating. Two teenaged brothers are facing murder charges for a mass shooting at a Sweet 16 birthday party where four died. 17-year-old Tyreek McCullough and 16-year-old Travis McCullough are in police custody. Both are being tried as adults and are facing four counts of murder. More charges are expected for the other 32 people that were injured. And China is about to be passed up for the world's largest population. Data from the United Nations predicts India to have more people around the middle of this year. Olivia, Brooklyn. An airport runway finally opening after 40 hours. How residents are beginning recovery efforts after devastating floods. And how the Japanese government's actions are threatening the livelihoods of fishermen. We'll bring you these stories and more coming up in Earth Report. Life is starting to get back to normal for homeowners in Fort Lauderdale after days of torrential downpour. Eli Miller joins us with this story and more in today's Earth Report. Yeah, residents are working to get back to normal after several days of rain and flooding in Florida. 
More than two feet of rainfall over a 24 hour period in Fort Lauderdale and the city's international airport reopened its south runway after being closed for nearly 40 hours. Residents all share a long road of recovery ahead. And in rural Minnesota, a dairy farm was forced to dump 800 gallons of milk following a record snowfall. Flooding last week blocked the only road to the farm, making it impossible for a milk truck to pick up supply. After four days, the milk expired and had to be thrown out. Now the owners of the farm say they do not expect, expect to dump any more milk. Japan plans to dump 1.2 million pounds of wastewater in the Pacific Ocean, raising concerns from local fishermen. The wastewater was contaminated during the Fukushima nuclear power plant disaster in 2011. Fishermen say the dump could change their way of life. However, Japan's prime minister argues the water is safe for release. Japan is expected to release the wastewater sometime this summer. Ladies, back to you. Tonight, our own Gaylord College will be hosting a special guest. We'll tell who's coming and how they're sharing a message of empowerment when we return. And taking a live look on our campus, we're seeing some cloudy skies, but generally pretty warm out there. Dylan, we know there's a chance for severe weather this evening. Yes, there is. And as you can see on the South Oval, it doesn't look too threatening right now, but we are starting to see some showers and thunderstorms develop near the I-44 corridor around the Lawton area. And that's what we're going to be tracking into moving into our area later this evening. Welcome back to OU Nightly. Let's take a look at that South Oval. We're seeing pretty blue skies, some clouds up there north of campus. But our current temperature right now, it is feeling pretty muggy out there. 84 degrees here in Norman with a dew point of 63. Now, as we take a look at our current radar and satellite, we're seeing some clearing skies here in central and southwestern Oklahoma. And this is what we do not want to see with a severe weather risk today. Now we're gonna come zooming in down to near Lawton where you're seeing these showers and thunderstorms develop rapidly. This is what we were expecting today with the severe weather, with the severe storms. And these are gonna be flying up towards the Oklahoma City metro area later this evening. Now let's take a look at our future cast. We're gonna be seeing again those showers and thunderstorms down near Lawton. These are going to be in our area around 10 p.m. tonight, and these will push out of here out of the state by late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Now, here's your severe weather risk, that slight risk all in yellow. We are expecting anywhere from damaging winds, large hail, even tornadoes. So we are watching the potential for some tornadoes, mainly here in central and south central Oklahoma, especially the Oklahoma City metro area. We do have a severe hail zone as well, mainly people in the yellow area. We could see anywhere from quarter size to base ball sized hail. And then as we talk about timing, anywhere these storms are already starting to develop so they could be in your area if you're around Oklahoma City metro area, north central and south central Oklahoma between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. tonight. Now here's your temperatures across the metro, 83 here in Norman, reaching 92 out there in Weatherford, up here in Guthrie, 87. Now as we look at the state, as a whole, you're getting 90 down there in Lawton, 91 over there in Elk City, and over there in the Panhandle, 83 up there in Guyman. Now look at your hour by hour forecast, 4 p.m. Coming out of the 80s as we go into the rest of this evening, getting 78 by 8 p.m. And around midnight, we're going to be around 71 degrees. Now tomorrow, we're going to be looking at a much cooler day. Temperature of about 74 degrees here in Norman, 77 down there in Lawton out west, 72 in Elk City. Now we do have a spring game coming up this Saturday. So tailgate around 1130, 57 degrees, mostly sunny skies. The clouds are going to make, a way, make their way in around kickoff, which is at 230. Temperature about 61 degrees, 62 by halftime. So again, much cooler than what we've been seeing these last few days. Now here is your seven day forecast showing a cool down Thursday into Friday. Again, that spring game coming up on Saturday, about 62 degrees there. And as we look at the rest of the weekend into next week, temperatures going to be climbing back up into the upper 60s and reaching 70 by Wednesday. Well, Dylan, thank you for keeping us weather aware. I know that we're going to continue these watches and warnings that are coming in as we have that ch chance for severe weather. Yes, we do have the potential for some tornado watches in our area. We will be monitoring that very closely as this event unfolds. Is there anything you think that we need to be aware of coming up? Um, as far as tonight, this is what we really are focusing on right now with the chance for some severe storms, um, but this weekend is, looks to be beautiful. All right. Thanks, Dylan. 
Gaylord College will host OU's First Lady this evening. Women in Gaylord host events once a month, and Ashley Harris, the CEO of HPI and First Lady of the University, will be tonight's special guest. The goal of the group is to empower the women of Gaylord College for the professional world. Tonight, we'll focus on negotiating skills and barriers affecting women in the workplace. And you can meet First Lady Ashley Harris at the meeting tonight at 6 p.m. with an RSVP. Speaking of powerful women, OU softball is on a hot streak and breaking records left and right. That's right. Now, those ladies, Brooklyn, they look unstoppable so far. Parker, what else can you tell us? Well, the nation's top softball team ties another program high. And Sooner basketball head coach Porter Moser is adding some new faces on and off the court. Stick around, because sports is next. Well, we got some breaking news for you. Like I said, we are watching that potential for a tornado watch, and that has just been issued for here, central and southwestern Oklahoma. This includes Lawton, Norman, Oklahoma City, even down there in Ardmore. We don't see any tornadic storms yet, but we will be watching that potential for some severe storms and possibly some tornadic storms coming up within the next couple of hours. Parker? Thanks, Dylan, and welcome into OU Nightly Sports. I'm Parker Abels. It's been a tough season for the Sooner basketball team, but today the team got some much needed good news as Sienna transfer Javion McCollum has committed to OU. At Sienna, McCollum averaged 15.9 points per game and 3.9 assists. Porter Moser will look for the guard to get some big buckets next season. And Porter Moser wasn't done adding to his program as he announced Tuesday that Armand Gates will join his staff as, a, as an assistant coach. Gates served on Moser's staff for two years at Loyola Chicago from 2011 to 2013. And with this football spring game on Saturday, the defensive line is ready to go and they're confident about where their unit is heading. I think everyone's getting better. Coach Davis is getting more comfortable with the guys and just demanding more. And just every day, just coaching technique, coaching, watching film, watching NFL guys, watching film from last year. Um, and then just knowing your job is the big, one of the biggest parts of it. I think it's probably one of the best D lines I've been a part of, honestly, just from top to bottom, from one to four, from even the freshman Ashton DL, they're working their butts off, trying to learn the defense. And they're kind of drinking from a fire hose right now, just coming in early, but they're doing a great job. Um, but everybody else around me is doing great. And USA softball top 25 finalist play for player of the year came out today and the Sooners have a nation leading five players on the list. Alex Duraco leads it off for OU followed by Jada Coleman, Tiari Jennings, Nicole May and Jordy Ball. Jocelyn Allo won this one last season and she'll look to have or she'll make she'll look to make it have three straight and we'll be back after this. Welcome back to OU Nightly. Meteorologist Dylan Strolko brings us one last look at our severe weather. Yes, right now we are watching some severe thunderstorms developing in our area. We, in fact, have a severe thunderstorm warning. This is issued for parts of western Grady County and into McLean County. Comes right up to that Cleveland County border. So this is, Norman, this is knocking on your doorstep more as well. So Blanchard around 518 p.m., Middleburg 512 Tabler 505. This storm is capable of producing some damaging winds and large hail. No tornado warnings as of right now, and this is the only severe thunderstorm warning in our area that we can see at the moment. But these storms are rapidly developing. As you can see, these storms developed within the last five to ten minutes. So these storms are rapidly developing. And watch this storm if you are in this area, Western Grady County, McLean County, and coming into Cleveland County. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Brooklyn Sweet. And I'm Olivia Day. Be sure to watch us weekdays live at 430. Tonight we leave you with a live look at today's memorial ceremony for the 168 lives lost 28 years ago. OU Nightly photographer Donovan England shares the sights and sounds from today's remembrance. We come here today to remember the sacred ground of the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum has helped heal us. It has served as a beacon of hope and proof of our shared resilience. Meanwhile, the museum works to carry the lessons of this event to new generations. <laughs> oh, 
perhaps uniquely, we work every day to embrace pluralism, the idea that many different perspectives and values can coexist. Each of us carries with us a unique experience and understanding of what happened that day.